You're listening to Oilers Nation Radio, presented by The Nation Network. Subscribe for free on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Thank you, Lisa. Makes me think of uh, a couple of text messages I sent to our girl, Rick. What'd you say? I just like to make sure that she's aware of how smoldering the Edmonton media is on a regular basis. It's understandable. I think she's quite aware. You know, I just want to make sure she's in tune. I just want to make sure she's in tune and up to date. Lisa? Yep. Nope. Lisa Evans, Play 107, does the intro for this podcast. If you get the opportunity to meet her, if you get the opportunity to meet her, ask her about her thoughts on coconut water. Coconut water, according to Lisa Evans from Play. Now, if you're listening to this, <laughs> you go find Lisa on social and say, hey, the boys on ONR were talking about your love of coconut water. Mm-hmm. She'll appreciate it, I think. She will. Do you remember when we went to Vegas last year? At our hotel, the MGM Grand, and they had those coconut waters in the lobby. in the actual coconut. It was the best. It was actually quite <laughs> life saving. Is this was that your like first foray into coconut water post? <laughs> well, I I just got it because it looked cool originally. They do just, look cool, and I was incredibly hungover after my avocado, not avocado. What were those things called? Anchovy salad. Yeah. Like, yeah, your fish salad. And just good here, and I had that. So, just you're so you saying know you were staying at the Park MGM, not. MGM Grand. Oh, <laughs> just just so you're aware. So, you were so what you're over. saying is you're a huge fan of coconut water. Of that one I had, yes. So I feel you, like I'm putting myself in a bit of a you, trap here. You are a little bit. <laughs> and Why? I, I am just talking about that one I had at the um, Park MGM. We Shout said Park and Jim. Not a fan of the consistency of coconut water. Or a huge fan. Well, on, or a huge fan <laughs> of it, depending on how you when you so catch again, it. If you're listening to this right ask now, her. ask Lisa about her love of coconut water. Mm-hmm. Lehman's in. I like it. I'm a big coconut water guy. I don't even need to be hung over to enjoy its <laughs> electrolytes and potassium. Do you get it? Do you know? No, you no. They, no, this is, this a, is an outside of me this joke is a too. Calgary, <laughs> a Calgary trip. Oh. What, what year was this? Like 2006, like six 17 or 18? I'm sure that it was before. I mean, last, I think last we time we were in Calgary, this. I sent a picture of BM holding one yeah. to her and her response <laughs> back for the message was exactly what she'll tell you. Something, something, something. Yeah. Boy, we were staying at the Sandman hotel at that time during that trip. I, well, that's the one where, yeah, she had the, uh, the, the run in the, the run in with Tom McGazzola. Yeah. Tom McGazzola. He was just trying me, to help her out. He was sitting beside her and said, Oh, there's a fray on your jeans. Let me get oh that for God. you. <laughs> it's been a while. It's yeah, been a minute. People are going to take that so many wrong ways. No, no. It was on a bus. <laughs> it was in public. Tyler. Get yeah, it's fine. Come on. What are we talking about here? Anyway, the Lisa Evans on Twitter, the Lisa Evans on Twitter. Ask her about her love of coconut water. Is that light usually on? Nope. I don't get that. <laughs> what we starts are, to the book? We do look super bright. <laughs> that looks better. That looks unreal. Look at that. Yeah, you look great. I want to start to the podcast. Let's get to it. Write down, write down all the levels. We'll never wow. hit this again. Look at that. Never. We should wear lighter clothes, though. Especially me and Dan. I Why you really, think I'm disappearing into the like, background? It doesn't get much lighter than white. You look white, like sorry. a floating head. Thank goodness Dan's wearing shorts today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a floating hockey fights logo. I really cannot see like this side of my body. So, <laughs> for those of you just listening, Whoa. Lehman is wearing mostly black, and in the background, he's getting lost in the video. Dan also would be a floating head and legs. Because it's, of the black wall in the studio. This is a blue shirt just for the people that are watching on the video. It is blue, but it shows up black on our screens. <laughs> it's blue, Lehman. Not, didn't say shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Wow. So Four minutes in. Let's get a podcast started. Time to time stamp. The Coconut only water. thing sweeter than the taste of victory starting your day <laughs> with a Cinnabon pull apart from Wendy. <laughs> Oh my God. Real Captain what? Kirk delivery there. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's no reason you can't have both right now that Wendy's and daily face off fantasy are giving you the chance to win weekly prizes all season long. Talking about, of course, daily face off survivor.com. Go sign up, put your picks in and get an opportunity to win some delicious prizes. And Hey, even if you don't, Get everything right and you make a few wrong picks. At least you know heading to Wendy's right now, you can pick up a $5 Cinnabon pull-apart and a small coffee. It's a great choice. As soon as I leave this building, 
I will be stopping at Wendy's on my way home for a small coffee and a $5 Cinnabon pull apart combo. Tyler's thoughts? Yeah, that's a good way to start your weekend. Hey, yeah. Got a big game tonight against the Utah Yeti. Yep. Got to get myself prepared. Got to get myself fed. Mm-hmm. Salt Lake City Saints. Uh, I feel like they won't go Saints. Mm, I don't like that. Do it. I don't I know enough about Salt Lake City, City to, to know though. I mm. do you go do you go after Salt Lake City or do you go after Utah? I, I, I think I, it'd be Utah. I read somewhere it has to be Utah. Why? There's like some sort of rule or something in the state. It makes this the Salt Lake City sister they have, wives. They have to put multiple cities into the same team name. I thought we had discussed this, Tyler. That is wrong information. Mm, but I it read logically it somewhere. It stands to it stands <laughs> to reason, it, reason just be because right. the yeah. population yeah. of Salt Lake is not much more than Phoenix's population, and we saw how well that turned out for them. Yeah, but Tyler's saying they legally can't do it, but they have a sports team called Real Salt Lake City. It's MLS. Yeah, but it's real. Yeah, it's barely a sport. sport NHL. But see, it's we barely call it a sport. By what real. metric? Number <laughs> of teams? <laughs> nope. Yeah, actually. Years exist. They have thir- they more than 32 teams. I Yeah, I think so. No, they, they must have like maybe 13. 11. 11. A side I thought that was just to distinguish them from just the Google fake. how many teams are in the MLS. Oh, count. No. I thought this just distinguished <laughs> them from the fake Salt Lake City. Out loud, please, Lehman. It's One, real two, Salt Lake three, City. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're probably ten. number two. So I times that by two because there's two 20. columns. Oh, they have 29. Ha! So NHL wins. But, but real fake, Salt Lake. Fake is right Salt here. Lake. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah but. The, one of the oldest teams, actually. But that's because Salt Lake went second, so they found a loophole in the law. <laughs> All right. What's the delicious <laughs> debate? Dailyfaceoffsurvivor.com. Sign up for a team. Make your picks. Win yourself some delicious prizes thanks to our friends at Wendy's. Tyler Remchuk, it's your time to shine. Yeah, delicious debate. What do you got for delicious debate? Convince our audience. How good coconut water is. (laughs) Or, I mean, they probably don't need much convincing, but for the hypothetical, bear with me. Convince our audience why the Oilers have a better chance of winning the Stanley Cup this year versus last year. Can I start? Yep. Experience. I think sometimes you have to learn to lose before you're able to win. And I think of a guy like Stuart Skinner. A lot of people are hard on him in the playoffs last year. Didn't have his best performance. I think a guy like Stu, given his demeanor, how well he's played, is going to look at how last year in the playoffs went, and he's going to learn for it from it, and he's going to be better. And I think that goes for a lot of players on the roster. I agree. Experience. I agree, I and mean, I think they're they're all a good chunk of them are feeling a little uh, a little extra motivation right now because of the way last year went, and I think a lot of them are putting it on themselves. Not so much Skinner per se, but I think guys like Nuge and Hyman and Kane, who we needed to perform or produce in the in in the playoffs, and really did not do it the way they were doing in the regular season. Then you add some of that experience that BM was talking about, add it to the uh, to the young guys in the bottom nine or sorry in the bottom six. You sprinkle in a guy like Perry, who is going to bring a lot to it. Ekholm is having a much better year than he was last year. Say so is Nurse. So is uh, Vinny. Like I mean, a good chunk of these guys are having a good chunk of the of the non top six forwards are having a better year this year than they were last year. And I think there's just some of that being pissed off from last year. The way that that the way that it ended. The way the, the fact that we beat ourselves last year. They're they're angry and they're going to come out and take it. Who's next? Dan. Okay. Um, I think that it's a combination of what Bag Milk and Rick said. Uh, I will just say that I think that this team, uh, you know, up until the start of this season was different and it behaved differently than it has this season actually going into it. Uh, a team where I feel like they were just like all about the clippings and we had the copper bust line and we've got you know all these different things where it sounds like they're saying the right things they're just doing the actions on the ice this team was down and out of it the entire league had written them off they were you know they, they were the joke of the nhl to start the season and they've turned it around they just rattled off 16 wins in a row to be able to fix that narrative and uh and they're just continuing to do it and build up to this playoff run so yeah i, I just think this team is different they're doing versus talking about it i would like somebody to tell us when rick and i said we were 100 percent positive they would make the playoffs mm-hmm. what's the difference between 165 we besides both said it 35. was more like we both said it was more likely 35. than not. I said besides thirty five. <laughs> well, probably a couple of letter mind. grades. There was no. doubt in your mind. That's the percentage. Difference. Whereas C's, Rick and I were confident. C's get degrees. Yeah, but I would know. 
Mm-hmm. So what I will I'm say need is, to verify your uh, transcript, please. <laughs> Level Doesn't of confidence. Matter. We all believe. Would you not feel better getting... if your parents said, "Hey, listen, I 100 uh, percent believe in you." <laughs> not I 65 percent believe in you. What's no, the difference well, in that? 65 percent would have kept me motivated. <laughs> I made it this far with that. <laughs> <laughs> when they were they they sat there and said, "Hey, we believe in you." 65 percent of the chimes. I love having haters. <laughs> well, I guess we're in to improve. Mm-hmm. They'd be lying if they said they 100 percent believe me anyway, and. Don't want to lie to parents. <laughs> what, what parent set up a barrier of 100% for you on a mark, Rick? It was always like, get above a 70 and you'll be okay. Not a chance. I tried to go in there and say, you know what? Math 33 is probably better for me because I'll get a better mark. And there was no yeah, having same, that shit. Same with mine. My old man no. was an engineer. He wasn't letting that shit fly. My Math 33? I might as well. Yeah, that was <laughs> I didn't do that was never going to happen. My mom, my mom was a teacher. And by the time I got to grade 12, she was kind of just like... You can kind of pack her in, eh? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I think we kind of know where this is going. <laughs> you did this. You made this movie what it is. You're good with it. Tyler, why are the Oilers better suited to win the Stanley Cup this year over last year? I'm going to go ahead and say their forward depth is a lot better than it was a year ago. Some internal improvements like Warren Fogle just being better than he was a year ago. I think Ryan McLeod right now is playing the best hockey of his career. And I mean, you go and look. Last year, they had Costin. Okay, this year, I guess Don't you could you say... you dare say a bad thing about him. I, well, I'm not going to, but I think this year, you'd look at Costin's replacement and say it's Corey Perry. photo of him getting on the plane? I do, mm-hmm. I do. So you'll never replace him in that regard. <laughs> but on the ice... Drake is jealous. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, Rick. <laughs> Why would happen? I think Corey Perry is going to be a lot more impactful than a guy like Costin was in the end of last year's playoff run. Where he played three minutes and 50 seconds in the last game, right? Mm-hmm. 100%. Um, you got Connor Brown in the lineup now. Uh, yeah, Henry. Well, now you believe in Connor Brown. Well, Henry, I was the one who I know, over. I was trying to put that Henrik's down better than there. Bukestad, I think. Um, when you do, again look at the yeah. role Bukestad was playing last year, seven minutes a game, like Henrik should have a bigger impact than that. I just think their top nine is better than it was a year ago, and they'll be harder to shut down. So I think the top nine is my reason. I love the experience one too. Skinner should be way better this year. Any other reasons that we have yet to discuss? Don't know if I have any more reasons. Um, what I'll say is that <laughs> I think that teams in the West, like we talk about it being like a gauntlet and everything like that. Yes. I think the teams on the Oilers side of the bracket might be easier than last year. Not yes. The easiest. No, that's, that's a fair way. But it's like, easier than, than what you have if you were like yeah. Colorado or Dallas. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Not- so I think they have like maybe a better path. There's just a different way to go about it too. I, I think just- it's going to be very difficult. Like I don't want to underestimate what Vancouver LA and maybe Vegas on Nashville could do because I think they're all good teams as well. But like Vegas was really, really good last year, but now they look beatable. You look like they can be exposed. Their team isn't healthy. Uh, Vancouver, obviously, the inexperienced. We're talking about how experienced the others are. Well, Vancouver are the opposite of that. And then the Kings, I think their goaltending is not as good as it was last year with Corpus Allo. And their blue line maybe isn't as dangerous as it, as it could be as well. So I think from that perspective, the Oilers are clearly the best team. In, in the Pacific and on that side of the bracket, I honestly think their biggest threat might be Nashville. If it goes, if it comes at Nashville comes on the Pacific side in the first two rounds, uh, just in like, I'm just grouping those four teams. Yeah. So in the first two rounds are, but yeah, okay. Fair, fair, fair. I, I would, I agree with you, Liam. I think that it's the, the path forward is not as difficult as it has been in previous years. Mm -hmm. We're two years removed from the Colorado avalanche being an automatic out for everybody. Like it was just, you were uh, Daryl Sutter said the, you're, you're just playing to play four more games. That's just what Daryl Sutter said. I don't think any team went in there and thinking that same thing though, but three out of four teams did exactly what Daryl Sutter said they would do. And they got swept by, they lost, didn't they lose two games? Yeah, that's right. Cause St. Louis lost four, two in that series. Second round. Yep. So it just it, like that's just the way it was. The Oilers are that team for me. I don't think there's that team in the NHL right now. Like I think it was very clear and obvious. Colorado were the best team in the league all year when they won the cup. I, and see, I would say the same with Tampa Bay as well when they were winning. I just think Dallas is so freaking good offensively this year and so deep offensively this year that they line up well with the Oilers, and I think that that would be a track meet. I agree. But I think when you look through the season of Dallas, like when Colorado were there, Kemper was nails the entire year. Mm-hmm. Ossinger is kind of just finding his game now. He's yep. been very average most of the season. So that's why I, what I mean is like, I just don't see like that Colorado team when they added Manson 
and Lekkonen. And did they get Cogliano as well at the deadline that year? I was like, holy smokes, who is going to beat this team? Right. And everyone obviously thought that was going to be Vegas this year, and it's not gone well for them. Now Mark Stone's back, miraculously. What a miracle. I can't believe that. Um, I, Yeah, I just don't see it. I think, so my answer, long story short, is I think you guys have an easier path to get to the finals <laughs> than previous years. Last year, specifically from the question. <laughs> anything End else you want to add debate. on that? And that's the show. Anything else you want to tack on to that? That was a, that was a mouthful. No. <laughs> Tyler, any other reasons you others are better suited to win the Stanley Cup this year? I do like the idea of Ekholm again, just maybe having a bit bigger of an impact. Like him and Bouchard, I think we can all recognize are on a higher level than they were a year ago. Last year is kind of like, all right, they maybe just, you know, that good second pairing, and we were still pushing a lot onto the under the shoulders of Nurse and CC this year. I think a lot more is going to be pushed onto the shoulders of Ekholm and Bouchard when it comes to quality of competition in minutes. And I think that they'll be able to handle it. So um, I think that's another one too. Just a bunch of guys, more experience everywhere. And this team should be more comfortable with each other too. I think they're also going to be more comfortable in tighter games. Yeah, they should. Over the stretch, I don't think, like, we haven't had a whole lot of the Oilers outscoring all their problems, and that's how they won. No, since March 1st, they have the third best goals against per game in the league. Like, they've been a really good defensive team pretty much since January on, which is, again, a a massive skill. We've seen... When was our 16 game? It was end of December till end of January. Yeah, I was going to say, because even there, we went 12 games in a row, I believe, with two or less goals against, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I just think, like... They're playing better all around hockey too. This isn't like you have to score four, five, six to win. Mm-hmm. That's a big difference. Yeah. Huge difference. If you listen to this right now, I want to know why are the Oilers better suited to win the Stanley cup in 2024 than they were in 2023? Was there anything anyone said that you guys disagree with out of curiosity? Who do you disagree with Lehman? No, nothing. Mm. I'm yeah, I don't think there I don't know if there really is like a controversial take on on this team. Like maybe one reason you could be nervous their power play hasn't looked as dangerous this year as it did last year. I mean, they can flip the switch at any point, but I think it is a bit of a concern right now the way the power play is going. However, they're in the no, you're not the driver's seat so so much, but the first two rounds they should have home ice home ice advantage, yeah. correct? Well, they've been unreal. Yeah. Eight yes. regulation I think and also like the they're scoring more at five on five too, which is just a huge, yep. they don't need to l- rely on the power play nearly as much as they have in the past. When, when was the last time they lost at home in regulation? Oh, 12 games in ago. Minnesota. At least 12 games Probably ago. In the wild. I think that would be the game. I'm just trying to think. I feel like a lot of those. They're 10 0 and 1 right now. Are they not? Sorry. They're 10 0 and 1 right at now home. at home. I believe. Yes. Okay. Um, a lot of those regulations. They lost six, three to Calgary. Sorry. Was that before? Oh yeah. Back to oh, back. That game just sucked. That was just an ugly one. A lot of the home losses on regulation those. would have been before like the start of the season. Yep. Like when They're they racking up losses. Out, yeah. Like Florida, Tampa, and they lost those two. Canucks. Canucks, of course. That's why a lot of people were confident in the Oilers' ability to win six straight games here over this stretch. That's why some people were confident Everyone, in the Oilers yeah. being in first place in the division. I was like 65% on the, the win six in a row. Yeah, I did say they were going to win six out, didn't I? I did say that. Pretty sure that was last Friday. Oh. Check the receipts. <laughs> Why are you staring at me like that? <laughs> Nothing. Just Rick and I are enjoying life. We are. All right. We're all in on that Windicat, right? Yeah, no, there's no percentage <laughs> split on that Windicat. How are you doing by that on the way, by the way? Yeah, that's what we were laughing about there. Really good. Um, yeah, we're we're through three. Today's night four of Rick and I taking $50 and rolling it over until the Oilers lose. Here's the question, though. Take minus 280, minus 160, minus 110. Do you go money line, regulation, or puck line? Regulation. Tonight? Don't push your luck. You, you, push it. Likely, if they win in regulation, it would be through a puck line win. But imagine if it's not. Push. Imagine that two goal lead and they get one with like four seconds to go. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, like, like on the like, minus one and a half. Yeah, that would be. What was money line? Money minus line minus two eighty. Oh, that's no fun. So yeah, regulation win. Yeah. I would go regulate. I think I we're going minus one sixty. I think is the way to go. On. Oh, Rick, I already Should put the bet in. Let's go minus one ten then. I'm in. I'm already in on minus one ten. All right, we're in. Shootout win. Why was I not allowed to? We talked about it on the list. podcast. Yeah, we literally we all, sitting right here yeah. like this. Where, Where was my it? invitation for money? <laughs> it sounds like the kind of shenanigans <laughs> I like. What is the total at? Fifty bucks is what currently? Or are you not saying that? Two sixty nine. 
Anyways, is what we're at right now. God, boys, so, I'm, I'm I'm cheering for you. Puck line. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, puck line. Mine's one, one and a half. Yeah. So <sighs> now do I have to bet $269 just to join in today? <laughs> see, if, you, that, if you see, want to keep up with that, us, that wouldn't yeah. be gambling responsibly, which is something we uh, were a big proponent well, it depends of. Depends on what his, uh, yeah, depends on what his like. unit size is. That's fair. But <laughs> I don't have it. The, the way we got Subscribe gotta, to my feed finder. The way Rick and I need to keep looking at this is $50. It's $50. I need mm-hmm. to pay for Peyton Manning outside. Ah, so yes. be irresponsible or for me. You could look at it like it's $10, $10, $10, $10, and $10. You could do that. Just get us into the wind. <laughs> oh yeah. Everyone's wow. itching when success comes. Wow. 26392. I wasn't given Work. an option to chip in money. You didn't chip in. He just he started it and I was like, all right, I'm in. This is garbage. This is all garbage. Two, six, three. We're just gonna do ours in the playoffs, bag milk. Five, 16 wins in a row in the playoffs. <laughs> Fine. Roll it over. Let's go. Up. It is made. I'm curious though, like, does anybody know? What is the fewest games a team has played on route to win the Stanley Cup? It might have honestly been Colorado that season. What'd they do in the cup final? They lost one in five. The yeah. Blackhawks lost So they two. lost three games that whole fucking... The Blackhawks lost two in 2017, and I was there for one of the losses. Yeah. I'll go, I'm Googling. I think it was two. They went 16 and two? I think so. I'm fairly certain. I don't... Maybe I'm missing it. Maybe I'm getting it wrong, but... It's impressive. If they went 16 and two. That's ridiculous. I think that's what... I know this is not the same sport... But I believe that's what the Lakers did in like the Kobe oh, the Shaq era. It's the Oilers from when? 88. Hot damn. I wanted it to be us. Was I wrong? Colorado. Not even close. Colorado lost four games. The Kings lost four in 2022 oh. and 2012. Uh, 97, the Red Wings were also four along with the Devils and the Canadians in 93. Uh, is there any more <laughs> Oilers? Five in 87. What were we in 88? Uh, that was two. Two. They lost two games. Please tell me. With the yeah. season I was thinking. No, of please Hawks go. Six in 88. So <laughs> 88 is when we swept Boston in five games because oh. of the power outage. Mm. So that's four. We would have beat Winnipeg in four? On oh, 1988. Yeah, Could you imagine? Like, I'm just sitting there thinking about what a playoff run that would be if you're just stomping through and they only lost two games on the way to win. I would they, need a lot of recovery drinks. They beat Winnipeg 4-1. They beat Calgary 4 <laughs> nothing. Embarrassing. They beat, they beat Detroit 4-1. Mm. And then they swept Boston in the final. Damn. And they won that in. They swept them in game five. Yes. The lights. That was the lights. What? He doesn't know. Yeah, he doesn't know. Is this like coconut water? Yes. <laughs> yep, exactly. No. Like Same First thing. of all, no, hold on. Just give him the movie. Go watch A Time to Remember. Oh, Time to Remember. Google it. Time to Remember. I'll put it on my list. Mm-hmm. They had a power outage, so they had to play. An they got game. foggy in there, so they kept skating. Or they stopped the game to skate around, try and like dissipate the fog. Yeah. They did that like two or three times, and on the third one, boom, power went out. So they stopped the game, flew back to Edmonton, and started game four again. Interesting. I wonder if that's... We amazing. swept them in five. There you go. There it is. Five games. A little... Also, still go back and watch Boys on the Bus first, and then a time to remember second. How many points did Wayne Gretzky get that playoffs? In that playoffs? And they played... In 19 games. I'm going to say... 52. F- yeah, I'm going to say 48. 33. Tyler? 37. 43. Oof. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't lead the playoffs in goals, though. Who did? Yari Curry. Yari Curry. I'm going to go with Yari Curry. Yari Curry. Sorry, Dan. Yari Curry, Curry, I think, is their all-time <laughs> goal-scoring leader in the playoffs. Really? Yeah. Well. Fun trivia fact. That is a fun fact. Pick it up, Wayne. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Slouch. So I guess the modern one is, yeah, is the Avalanche. They lost four. So they, the final must have been 4-2. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, they yeah. swept an ash. 88 is still modern NHL. I Sorry, I meant most recent. Okay. <laughs> Cap era. <laughs> Sorry, I'm showing your age. I know. Just, you know how he feels about that. I'm posting the GDB right now. Multitasking. Post. Do you want me to do an ad read for you? Yeah, go for it. All right, let's get into who delivered for our friends at DoorDash. 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more. All you need to do is download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code NATION25. Available to our listeners in Canada, you can even take advantage of the Double Dash feature, which lets you add a second stop onto your order for zero extra delivery fees. Promo code NATION25 and DoorDash. Uh, how many games has it been since our last pod? Just one? Just Vegas? We're just doing who delivered for Vegas or the rest of your life. How about that? All right. Maybe the life. Although that's kind of hot and cold performance. 
Tyler will not be using the same hot and cold performers okay. that he uses in this segment. No, I got to find different ones. <laughs> Starting down at the end of the line for our friends at DoorDash. Ding dong. Nation Dan, we deliver for him. Uh, I'm going to give it to Dylan Holloway. Comes into the game and just played really well. Shot the puck at the net a few times. Was uh, buzzing around the offense. You like to see it, especially in a game without Connor. So Dylan Holloway delivers. He me. played great. Sorry, Liam. He played really, really well. Yeah, he did. Good enough to stay in the lineup. Thanks to his last stint in well, Baco, he's got that confidence at a level that's going to help produce in the NHL. So if he keeps playing that way, Nobby's going to have a hard time pushing him out of the lineup. The question is who comes out? And I know you're going to go, who's yeah, Mark? No, I don't know that Brown that's the and, Brown and Ryan come out first before yeah, Mark. 100%. So who is it, Tyler? Comes out. I'd be fine with either one of Brown or Yan Mark. Again, you can you can afford to sacrifice a penalty killer with the number of PK guys you still have on. And I just like the potential upside of Dylan Holloway being in your lineup. Buzz soft, four checks hard. I know he's not scored a lot in his NHL career, but we know that offense is in there. I, I like Holloway over either one of those two, even if it's a fourth line role. So you like Ryan over Holloway? No, I like Holloway over Derek Ryan, over Connor Brown, over Matthias Yanmark. Okay. Liam Harbin. For our friends at DoorDash, who delivered for you? Stu. I thought he had a very good game despite facing not many shots. He had yep. that, that big save on Anthony Mantha too. Is he it did. Anthony or Anthony? Mo, his name is Mo. Mo? Mo Mantha. Mo Mantha. Big save on Mo Mantha. And yeah, unfortunately he couldn't keep the shit out, but I thought he played really well. Tyler, for our friends at DoorDash, who delivered for you? Who delivered for me? I really, really wanted to say Dylan Holloway, but I'll go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to give some love to Ryan McLeod. I think Ryan McLeod has been playing some real good hockey. Some would say the best hockey of his career as of late because he had a heater earlier in the season. It was as a winger and it led to us. And, and listen, I said this a ton of times, like just make this guy a winger. I was kind of sick of the center experiment. Well, what we've seen over the last 10 days is a guy who's looking like a really good third line center for the Oilers. Him and Perry seem to be clicking real nice. Holloway and Kane both had good games next to him. So I'll say Ryan McLeod coming into his own as a third line center. I actually really like that line of McLeod Holloway. Perry as well. So maybe when McDavid comes back, he has to earn a spot back. Start him on the fourth line. Mm -hmm. No McDavid. Healthy you don't, scratch. you don't lose your, you don't, oh no, that's the way around. Never you mind. healthy scratch from the first two games of the playoffs. Cause think of the boost you get in game three when he comes back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's nobody's talking that's about incredible. that. Yeah. For our friends at DoorDash, Rick, who delivered for you? Well, I have a one A and a one B. One A will be Tyler and myself. We'll skip on for that, though, and go to 1B. And I'm going to go with Leon Dreisaitl. The captain was out. The best player was out. Leon Dreisaitl had to step in and kind of, I don't know, we'll carry the team, but kind of lead the team and prove that he can, uh, not even prove that, but he just had to go out there and, and lead the team, and he did. He got a golden assist. Um, there's not much more you can ask for a guy like that, especially when your captain's out. If you listen to the Real Life podcast, somebody send that to Chalmers. Right, Lehman? Chalmers was in one yesterday about Leon Dreisaitl under the guise of a fictional friend he has. Yeah, it just didn't make sense. He's, what did he say? He's like, what if I, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but he was basically like, what if Dreisaitl and he threw Malkin in there as well? What have they done without McDavid or Crosby? And my Malkin won a heart trophy. Like, well, they both won a heart trophy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, but they didn't win a Stanley Cup. It's like, what? That's not an argument. <laughs> So yeah, and and he claimed it was his. This was his it was his friend. friend. And then when we were probing, who's the friend? You wouldn't tell us. Not even not initials. Even like post show. Yeah, it's just like the girlfriend I had at a different school. Mm -hmm. that was yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you wouldn't know her. For DoorDash, <laughs> the guy who delivered for me is Big Viking Daddy. In his last twelve games, Matias Ekholm has sixteen points, six goals, ten assists looking every bit like a top pairing D man that we've wanted. He's playing such good hockey right now. In the last six games, I believe I saw a stat that said he has the second most points in the team and Connor's first in the last six. That's incredible. Just, the numbers like 12 games. He's got 16 points. That's top six production. <laughs> top six forwards. So Matias echo buddy. This heater is unbelievable. And I just, I love watching him do it. So it looks like the team is rounding into form just as the playoffs are about to start. Like that, he's done it a few times now. That goal he scored the other night where he takes a clapper from like the dude, he has, a, he has a violent slap shot. That dude every time is not picking a corner. He is trying to put the puck through the net every single time. If I was a goaltender, I'd just kind of step to the side. That's kind of Aiden Hill actually did. Yeah. 
it's kind of moved over. And yeah. his slap shots, when they're like that, they're not around the pad, like the, the, the leg pads either. He is going up around your ears. That is not a fun place to be. No, right. That clip of McDavid holes. ducking behind the net, trying to avoid a Matias at home one timer. Understandable. Sticks in my head now. Yeah. Makes sense. Looking ahead tonight, the Oilers play the Arizona Coyotes. Who? Why? Did, it makes me sad. And I want to go into a, a little bit. It's Although, like F1. Yeah. They're just changing. Almost, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's because like I was thinking about this, Rick. So I Googled it. Do you know that it was already 15 years ago when the Blackberry guy, Jim Balsilli tried to buy them in bankruptcy court 15 years. That's insane. This has just been dragging along for almost two decades. So to have them, our boy, Frank Saravalli broke the news on Twitter the other day that they're moving to Utah. I fully blame that organization for the cap struggles we're having and every team is having right now for the flat cap. This, the, the salary cap should be a hell of a lot higher had they been doing their fair share of the bringing in money. I blame COVID. Well, that's a flat cap, but the cap would be much higher <laughs> if they had like, I don't know, 16,000 people in their arena 41 times, a, 41 times I a blame year. them for COVID. Oh, that's fair. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, as long as no I one's blaming me right now. I'm in on that. Yep. I actually thought it was Rick's fault because of the high five. Line. The high five, five train was, oof. <laughs> yeah. That thing was cooking that night. I'm not saying he's patient zero for Canada, but he might have been. <laughs> I might have been. <laughs> Passing I, amongst everybody there. I think I'm just the most Stupid pissed off about band. it just because the Coyotes have been trolling that fan base now for a couple of years, it feels like. Marilello deserves this. I think yeah. they're, I think they've been honestly trying to stay there. Of course. It's they just. Have. You're trying to swim in quicksand. You're yes. not going to win. So I don't think they've been like being overly like playing their fans. Like guys, we're t- they could have been a little more truthful, but did you hear who's running their social media? No, it's the owner's kid. <laughs> Frank said that on the DFO rundown. It's Marowello's son. That's cool. That like it wouldn't surprise me, but also I think that they have a team of people there that are actually clever and do the jokes behind the scenes. They have a Marowello's kid is on but the team. Like he's agreed. in there. He the, last is, night though, I found that they put out a statement via coyote central Instagram account. And the statement was outrageous. People thought it was, or they thought it was so stupid because it came out through this, this account. And then the, the coyotes actual social media accounts reposted it, but it says, let the fans know we hear them and we are doing everything we can to keep the coyotes in Arizona with a forever home. We feel their pain. It sucks. And we are sorry. They have to go through this. It's probably all true. <laughs> it's my guy. They're moving. It's just, it's Although- just, yeah, it's true. But you know, I mean, they'll be back in that. We were down. Well, I mean, of that statement that, hey, listen, the, we want to bring a team back. That's just ridiculous. But I mean, we almost lived the same type of stuff for a far, very short that's period right. of time. Right. Not 15 years. But I mean, there is the Houston and Kansas City. And then the Seattle. people have lost their mind when what's his face went to Seattle for a mm-hmm. fucking lunch or something like that. Um, we've kind of been there. Not to the same extent, but, but we've we watched- worried. We've watched the Winnipeg Jets be pulled out of Winnipeg. We've their watched fans the still aren't showing up right now. We watched no. them, man. the Jets. Yeah, their fans are showing up. They just have bad corporate support, which is the whole problem with a Winnipeg and a Quebec city and a Utah and an Arizona. Yeah, to an extent, but there's at least the potential in those large American markets to get it if you work right. In Winnipeg and Quebec, like those Canadian markets, there's just not really that same upside. There's upside, but not to the same extent. Yeah, I just uh, it's Tyler hard. saying move the Jets again. They, back to Atlanta. Back they go. I just I hope that they paid the company that made all the renditions of their arenas. Oh, they should have been a putting up for years. Yeah. Who Winnipeg? It didn't hurt. That didn't hurt Arizona's chances of moving to Salt Lake. So, oh. are you looking at Winnipeg's population? No, he's Winnipeg's looking at Salt Lake. Winnipeg's population Lakes. is seven hundred thousand. Salt Lake City is two hundred thousand. Well, I was like, I wonder what's the aggregate surrounding area. Provo. The GTA, if you will. Yeah. The great assault like area. I think like 1.25 million. Yes. Yeah, so a little Is bit. The GSL. Population of Salt Lake City, greater area. 
And that's in 2020. Now do Winnipeg. So I think like to me, the thing that <laughs> still 700,000, you can just do Winnipeg. I legitimately feel bad for Coyotes fans <laughs> who are actually Coyotes fans. I know there's not many of them, but there's a group that have just, man, they've been get kicked in the shin for two decades. Yeah. Like they just want to watch hockey. And then the arena moves into Red Deer. And then they're like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll Fall drive you. to Red Deer to go to games. And then they go, wow, this is far. This kind of sucks. And then it gets moved to a teeny little arena. And they go, okay, well, I guess we'll go watch some games in some teeny arenas. I just don't understand. Like, so I think the NHL should go back there eventually. Where? To Arizona, to Phoenix. Once For like a weekend? But it's got to be like in but Phoenix. things though. have to be ready for them when they get there. There has to be arena. a arena. All that stuff has to be in a good spot. It can't yep. just be like this random desert spot that they put out a video of the other day. I know it's right outside Scottsdale, but it doesn't feel right. Um, but also, when can the NHL even expand? Oh, they're doing it, man. I know, but it's so dumb. Yes. Because there's not enough players. I think we were seeing that a couple of years ago, and we've still had been able to bring in Vegas, and we've been able to bring in Seattle. I, I don't I think the league was in a better spot than to bring in two teams than it is now. Like so oh, I, in, yeah, so I think you probably wait a little bit. Yeah, I think you wait a couple Vegas more years. Come into the league. 2016, 17, yeah. So let's it sounds like they want to get back to Arizona within the next four years. Four, four, you don't have years. enough time to build a f- well, even I Houston, just think they want to expand. When it comes to the league and when it comes to Gary Bettman talking about Phoenix and Arizona and, and, and speaking in a positive way. I think that's what they ultimately want. As soon as the as soon as they uh, they move to Salt Lake City, I think they're gonna kind of fall off the map because no one's no one's gonna try and get a hockey team there anymore. Like they're not there; they're gone. There's no bringing them back. So now you got to start from scratch again. You don't think they'll try and get a team back in Phoenix? I think they may try. I just don't think it's gonna win. Well, I think it'll be Houston first. I yeah, I mean, you're not gonna get back into Arizona or Phoenix or anything like that until like 2050. Mark it oh, down. I, we I, talked to Frank Saravalli yesterday on Oilers Nation every day, and he thinks like the NHL's so horny for Phoenix as a market that they're going to try and crowbar one in there, provided yeah. that they have the infrastructure to do it. They just need to find. Yeah, but it. that's the that's the infrastructure. Scottsdale's mayor, Matt, or, uh, mayor came on and said, "I ain't want nothing to do with this shit." All it takes is them finding some billionaire that's willing to play ball with them and wants a team that's already in a city where they've got an established franchise, and they're like, "Well." Could we interest you in this southern destination? Because like the players came out and said it. They've said it even just after this news has come out. I think it was Dumba that was saying like the Arizona market makes sense to be able to get players to come play for you. And that's been an issue for them for years is getting people to even just buy into playing Arizona Coyotes hockey. So but you can't get you might be a good players, but you can't get fans. But it, they I had, a, they had a, that, a regular sized arena where it was like three hot dogs and three tickets and we'll give you 20 bucks and they still couldn't get everybody in there. I, yeah, but I just think- What more we, can you do? I but mean, we talked think of that one when I went to a game in Glendale and yeah. was, I'll never forget it ever. So admittedly, this was 15 years ago, 12 years ago, I went to a game there, but I'll never forget the banner. It was $100, got you four tickets, four hot dogs, four popcorns, four drinks. $100. You can't even get the four popcorns in Edmonton for that money. No, no. but like, it, it, like, I mean, just imagine trying to establish the Oilers footprint in this city with 15 years of the decade of darkness to build off of. And it, that's, that's essentially what they've been trying to do. And, but it's not like they've they been were moving full, it around the city as well. It's not like they're full. The it's not the like state, they were ever the full to begin with though. And they've actually had decent teams. Yeah. Shane oh, yeah, Doan and sure. them, they, they went to at least yeah. a conference final once. They've built, they've built some teams. Yep. They didn't, they and they did not three, build off that. Have they played in three different ranks? Yeah, yeah they're like the like Ottawa a, Senators. It was a downtown Phoenix, Glendale, Gila, and then Gila River, and, and then, then Gila then, River. Yeah. Where did like, question, dumb guy question, I don't watch basketball. Could they not play where the Suns play? Oh, they no. Want them. Want them to. Yeah, so that Ishbia or whatever hit the new owner, they put like 30 million, or sorry, the owner before Ishbia, I think the story is he put like $30 million into that arena downtown and intentionally didn't put a nice plant in. It was like, gotcha. not a chance. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Well, anyway, well, let's play the Utah Coyotes, Arizona team. Something like that. Something like that. Tonight at seven o'clock at Rogers Place. No Connor McDavid. He is saying that uh, still taking it slow day by day. I actually have no problem with this whatsoever. I saw his video. He's playing tomorrow. Yeah, probably He's playing tomorrow. I think he'll play tomorrow. But I, at the same point, what he I was going to no, say, he wants the first place in the division. He wants his assists. <clears throat> he looked very good on that video this morning. He's playing tomorrow. I will buy that. At the same point, I wouldn't mind if he doesn't. 
I think now that he's missed the one game and it's like, hey, you're not getting the Art Ross or whatever, I think he's kind of like, yeah, sit him till he's 105% healthy. Like if they sit him all weekend, right? And he plays Monday against San Jose. Is that the worst thing? I don't think so. I do really want to catch Vancouver though. I, but I guarantee he does too. So to that point, I think the Weathers can be Vancouver even without him. Just be Vegas. Probably Vancouver is not that dominant right now. I was on Canucks. They damn near lost to Arizona the other night. I was on Canucks conversation yesterday with our boy, Big Dave and uh, Demco could be back tomorrow as well. So it's an interesting angle for the Canucks Ooh. side. What was I don't his injury? Think we should underestimate them Lower and say, body. Oh, this could be Magal McDavid. Well, they could. They could. Yeah. We just beat not, Vegas. Who didn't have Petrangelo. So sure. you all Chandler Stevens. But the Canucks may not have their star goalie. They've been yeah, very they mediocre also since he's have been out. Quinn Hughes, JT Miller, Patterson. Like they're a really, really Hey, good listen, team. they went and picked up Mantha that everybody was he's not very yeah. good when he was in Euler Talks. Then all of a sudden he went to Vegas. Everyone's like, oh my God, this guy's really good. Then they got Hurdle. Who would have cost us Leon Drysaddle in the in the future? But people still wanted to get him somehow. And I, he wasn't and no second good. Second game back. Like we're at the, I'm just saying. Like I think they did a really good job. You don't think the Oilers could be Vancouver without McDavid? I just don't think we should say they. It feels like we're very confident going against. Vancouver. I'm not saying that. I'm confident, saying yes. Overly, no. You know also, what? I, don't I think that, you know what, Liam? I am confident that they can beat the Canucks without I'm McDavid. I'm just saying. I think. Having your best. This is your sixty-five percent you, though. Yeah, this is this. Uh, this, this is, is what 65% that is. This is sixty-five you. speaking. I think they can probably win too, but I just think that like <laughs> probably. We but we're comparing the Vegas game to what Vancouver will be when Vancouver is missing one player. Vegas is missing. Vancouver just lost five. Arizona, though. So did Vegas. Yeah, that backs up my point. Your point. My bad. <laughs> I just don't think we should underestimate what Vancouver. I don't. I'm not they underestimating them three times. Not at all. Very different team now, of course. I'm not underestimating. Vancouver Look at our at record compared to their record since Nobby got here. For I just, sure, but also we're saying they've been like McDavid wants to win the division. You don't think Vancouver wants to keep hold of that? Of course they do. So what I'm saying is they McDavid having McDavid is a lot different than. But let me ask you a different question. Game. What matters more to you personally? The Oilers winning the Pacific Division or Connor being healthier for the playoffs? Because um, for me, it's not close. No, definitely not. But I think they, I don't think Connor's that hurt right now. I don't think he's that hurt either. I would say McDavid healthy. Yeah. So, like, that's why I wouldn't be offended if they. Oh, I wouldn't be offended either. If they don't play him tomorrow, also, and just on Monday against San Jose. But when you're, when you're one of those best players season. in the world, though, I don't think you like to take, take a time off. I totally agree with that. But sometimes gonna daddy's got to tell you. That's what's going to drag him. Sometimes daddy got to go. Listen even if it. even if he does one of those things where he gets seven, six minutes of five on five and then the rest is power play time. I think you'll see Connor McDavid on the bench tomorrow night. I would if I was betting on it, if I'm a betting man, which I am, even though I wasn't invited in the fun rollover bet. <laughs> I would bet on him playing. I'm just saying I wouldn't be offended if he doesn't. And I still think the others can be Vancouver. I'd be a little bummed out, but I'd be, I'd get over it really quick. Let's just walk me through it. Say the Oilers win out, which I predicted last year, although I wasn't invited in the fun bet. Oilers would play whomst if they finished first. Would that be Nashville? Is that where the Nashville yeah, comes out? Like like today? Yeah. Yes. And then the other team would play St. Louis. If they finish currently, oh, they play. Sh- yes. I like I it. Like I was going to say. St. Louis has an opportunity an to do probably side. one of the funniest things in the world right now. It's not going to happen. I am not holding my breath. But oh my lord, would I have fun if it happens? So let me have a look here. So save the fun things. So if St. Louis wins out, they have to win out. Yeah, yeah they'd they be at ninety-five almost. points. They have Carolina, Seattle, and Dallas. So pretty good opportunity. But to do Dallas. That. I mean, if we're if you want to like reasons why Dallas could be resting some guys by then, they could be load that managing the last game. Basically, Carolina pencil them into the playoffs right now. And who is the other one? Seattle, Seattle, Seattle. Yeah, and Seattle already done. Hard. First two are at home. Carolina is going to be tough. Who's Vegas? Who's Dallas? Um, Vegas. Minnesota tonight. Minnesota. Come on, Colorado, Bill Guerin, please. Chicago and Anaheim all at home. It's not happening, guys. Ooh, it sounds like a really good time to step on a banana peel for them. There's a reason Mark Stone came out today and not next week when they were planning to actually review. Unless them. Mark Stone plans on playing goal with Aiden Hill, <laughs> Vegas still does not scare me. I can't. I don't think they can even no, bring him back. They right? Can't. They can't. But it's a, the emotional boost that they're trying. It's just to a, yeah. amazing how he's practicing right now. I it's, thought he was dead. I mean, it's all our faults for believing he had a spleen to begin with. <laughs> like. I want to see this. Sir. I want to see. I would like to see. Did already. I would Did like we? to see the X-ray of said of said uh, injury. 
I would like to see the spleen. diploma of said doctor who said he has that injury. <laughs> he says Dr. Nick has given him his yeah, review. I honestly think at this point, <laughs> Vegas's integrity is right there with Ipe's fucking... Mizahara. Ipe Mizahara? Yeah, yeah, Ipe, yeah, yeah. Ipe's lock of What's the day. What's the latest on that? Real quick, just give me a 30 second. That's going to be my co-performer, cool but um, yeah, he, he was stealing money. Pain? He, he stole. Was, he stole Shohei. Yeah, life. they had like audio calls of him like calling a bank, being like, "Hello, I'm Shohei Otani." No way. Oh yeah, awesome. I need money for a Porsche, and awesome. like get some money. They have text messages. I love. The book, you know? Why can't we just call call it? Who's got a phone right now? I do. Lehman, yeah. break your phone out. Hello, this is Connor McDavid. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Hello, CIBC. Is, Hello, my name is Lehman Jay Downton. Please accentuate your your uh, <laughs> accent a little bit. Yeah, and then yeah, call. We need. Who am I calling? Five. The bank. Ferraris, please. Hello, bank. <laughs> this is Jay Downton. I'm wearing my bunny hug. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hi, Jay. I will like be called ATB then. Million dollars, please. <laughs> yeah. So whatever you got in that account, just clear. We're looking to do a little spending. Buying a Porsche. <laughs> so that what the thing was? Yeah, he's buying a Porsche, even though Otani has a deal with Porsche and presumably gets all his cars for free. One of the best parts <laughs> about presumably. the whole thing is that Otani is so rich, he didn't notice it leaving his bank account. He wasn't that... I mean, okay, so he's probably made a lot of money in Japan that that is what it is. Um, but is the money he'd made through the angels at the time and being down $40 million, you would notice that he wasn't sitting on $700 million at the time. Uh, before signing this current deal, according to this website, baseball reference, his career earnings was about 42.2. Exactly. <laughs> but we so don't know. He's looking at buying a $2.7 million house and like, oh, sorry, sir. <laughs> that did not go through. But we don't know if the 40 million was actually stolen or if that's how much he was in the hole. That's the, that's the <laughs> issue there. Cause it's the, <laughs> well, I think that right? the, 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 according to everything so, so far is he was da- the, the hole was 40 million. And he stole what? 16 or something. something like whatever yeah. the number is. Stole $16 million. Yes. Yeah, what happened what to the four number? Or that was just the sports that was the, book. That was the very first number. Then they had to like oh, alter no. the story a little oh, bit to make no. sure, you know, the, the, oh, no. the crosshairs weren't exactly on Shohei anymore. Oh no. So they're like, whoop, whoop, whoop. well, anyway, because again, remember the story was out. Shohei was standing beside Ipe in the dugout yeah. and they were telling jokes to each other. If you just stole that much money from me or I, whatever the hell that is, I'm probably not going to be hanging out with you. I would have found a new translator by then. I'm just here for the lols. So, Mark Stone. Yes. Who? When they go to LTIR, mm. what do they have to like? Do they have to prove anything about the injury? He's got a boobies. Yeah, they do. Like, but how, what do they no. show? The NHL can have access to that info. Yeah, yeah but like I bet you nobody asked ask for it. You just a doctor you would assume have to that the doctor is so on the up and vet. They have a last, last rate. Yeah, he went to the vet. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's supposed to be like, everyone was saying it's a three to six month injury. Yes. Yeah, but you don't know how so long the spleen have had been lacerated. But like Mark Stone is also made of adamantium. So he just like cranks that on. Like well, not remember when he was, ba- his back was going to break for the say, rest of his life. Well, remember he cranks it on. Like yeah, it's, oh, it's not flowing. It is the corner it's not thing. 24 yeah. seven last year. They made him limp. Like to at least <laughs> for the back injury. The, yeah, <laughs> so just, like, where, I don't know where your spleen is on your body. We just got to walk. Ah, video was so I, sore. I posted a, a tweet. I said, Corey Perry's latest Google search. Where is the spleen? Yeah, I bet it is. I bet it is. I bet you the worm goes right after it. Please bring me the Vegas night, the Las Vegas nights. I know that I hate when you say that. Please bring me the Las Vegas Golden Knights. The vegan nights. Then I want to know exactly which hotel they're staying in because I'm calling upon all Oiler fans to do what we did in the 90s, what we did in the early 2000s, and get outside that hotel and make some damn ass noise all night. Mm-hmm. You call for delivery. And if you think night. that's uh, not playing fair, well, tell me how... Petrangelo's 12 to 6 hack on the on Leon was playing fair. Let me tell you about something, Rick. Please. It's the Snow Valley Aerial Park, though. Wow. Opening May 31st, it's family fun all summer long. Attractions include the Aerial Tower, White Mud Creek Mining Company, Target Golf, and the all-new Mini Golf. Creekside Eats will be open for snacks and refreshments. Watch for on-hill events all summer long. You might do a little camping. I know Tyler does opening May 15th. You can go to rainbow valley.com book a spot online and enjoy one of 60 sites and three camping domes right here in Edmonton's only campground. Boys, it's time for ask the idiots. I've got one, two, three. One of them is about hockey. <laughs> Get into the off season. It's a good mix. favorite. Well, this one is kind of about hockey in a way. And this one comes in from not your Liam. So this one's for, I'm going to start with Liam from not your Liam. Man. 
And also, I just think this is a fun question. Lehman. Okay. Soup or stew? Which is the superior food? Soup. Which specific soup? Tomato. Okay. I see. That's where you need you need need more information. Sorry, friend. I thought you no 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 from the question asker. <laughs> what kind of information? You Answer like? sucked. Yeah. Well, yeah, su- soup soup can just be soup on the whole because there's good soups, there's bad soups. What kind of what kind of a stew are we talking about? Are we talking nice Guinness stew on St. Patty's Day? Or are you talking about that sounds lovely? The thick and chunky with the fork in it. They, what mm. are we what are we talking here? I always eat my stew. Is it out of a can? Are we talking fresh? Oh, it's gotta be fresh, right? I'm going stew though. I right. need to get the yeah, something hearty. Yeah, yeah. Some more beef every, in there. More everyday versatility to a soup. Someone soup. Yeah, sometimes you can See. put pasta in it. Delicious. <laughs> Damn soup or stew. No. Which is a superior food. Stew has to be the answer because it yes. has actual food in it. Thank you. Versus Potatoes, being beef, boiled carrots, versions cool. of other things. Yeah, like tomato fun. soup is a boiled tomato. That's all you're drinking. So like yep. to me, a beverage. Awesome. soup gets the win because I'm a big like faux ramen guy. Which was a, would be a heartier soup. Sometimes I get a ramen's got a fucking egg in it. It's true. You know? Where does chicken noodle with chunks of chicken? You know, that's that, a soup. You can't call that a soup. But it's got yeah, chunks it's, in it. It's a, that's a soup. So what makes sucks. a soup a stew? That's a good question. I, actually, I changed my mind. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> question rescinded. And obviously the answer is what's better? Super stew? <laughs> Crazy stew. enough. Next Why? question. He's playing in the AHL. Soup's in the AHL. Ugh. You did a mic drop there for those of you who can't see. <laughs> More of a mic turn. Next Mike question push. is, uh, what is the difference between soup and stew? Isn't that mm. from uh, Christopher? Yes. Yes, I thought mm-hmm. so. Go ahead, Tyler. I, uh, brown. <laughs> is that a huge the difference? save percentage. <laughs> Gravy is your a answer? Huge save percentage. Tyler, That's I'm coming in the middle with you. Next question. How much does it matter for you personally that the Oilers catch the Canucks? That one um, from Kev. Well, for me personally, difference between going to LA or Nashville for a couple of days in a few weeks, personally... I kind of want to go to Nashville. That sounds like a lot of fun. So that's the difference for me personally. It is. Also, I think actually I'll just say the Oilers beat both those teams in five games. So I don't care either way on the ice. I am going to tell Tyler because it may mean I go to Nashville for the first time ever. Thank you. Lehman. Uh, How much does it matter that the Oilers win the Pacific division? Everything. (laughs) To go from last in the league to win the Pacific division. Like that matters. Who said that? Rick did just then I did as well. Rick, how important is it for you when the Pacific division first time since the eighties up until the puck is dropped on the 22nd or the 21st or whatever it is, everything nation dad. Yeah. It just, it should matter to fans. It's that bragging right that this season, like Lehman said is uh, one that should have been lost and the Oilers can still win the entire division on American Thanksgiving. That was November 23rd. Edmonton. Nope. Is it every year? Not no, true at all. <laughs> the Edmonton Oilers were 21 points behind the Vancouver Canucks. 21 points. <laughs> Mamma mia, that's a lot of points. He's a lot of points. Yahoo. Pistache. 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 <laughs> last pick. Ask the idiots. And Tyler, you're going last for this one. Boys, we are going to put together Tyler's wedding party using only nation staff. We need a best man. Who asked this? This one comes in from or, uh, orange and blue in my veins. Okay. Real name is Gary, in case you're wondering. I just <laughs> learned that the other day. Okay. We need to pick a best man. We need three groomsmen, and we need a ring bearer. Bearer or bearer? Oh, like bear. an actual bear. Ring bearer. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I met you Nation Dan, let's, let's build Tyler's wedding party out here. Only okay. nation staff. So what do we need? Let's start with the best man. Who's best, the best man? Best man is going to be bro Dotto. Cause you got to have a good pregame set up for your wedding and Aaron bachelor party, your pregame guy. bachelor party is what you're referring to. Yes. That yes. too. <laughs> I get it. That's fine. And you're thinking along the same uh, lines. Don't worry. You're three groomsmen. Okay. Well, I think it's going to probably going to be Lehman, uh, Jay and bag milk mm-hmm. as our groomsmen. And then and your ring, ring bear. bear is was, <laughs> I don't even trust him with that. If I'm being totally honest with you guys, <laughs> he's a ring bear in a bear wrong. furry costume. <laughs> Gross. Liam Harbin. We are putting How together Tyler's a wedding party using only nation staff. Who is your best man? Well, I'll say Jay cause Tyler, it'll be good. A couple of weeks off for, for the honeymoon. Mm. We had an extra couple. 
Brownie points are mm-hmm. J, yep. so I'll say J. Yep. Bankroll the bachelor party. Yeah, GIF yeah, would be yeah, good. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We could go to Mexico. Bachelor's party um, has sponsors. I'll say... You're groomsmen. You need three of them. Grooms. Well, I'll be the ring bear. Okay. You're the bear. I'll be the bear. <laughs> I'll say you three can be the groomsmen. All right. Oh, and our staff. Yeah. Rick, who you got? Who's the best man? Who's the three groomsmen and the ring bear? All right. So I, my initial was... was Almost bang on with Dan, so I got to swap it now. <laughs> so I will take care of the bachelor party. Pointing yourself, best man. I right, see it is more because of the bachelor party than anything else. So you know I what? You know what? No, no. Him. Even I didn't do that. We're gonna do it in a two-parter. I take care of the bachelor party. <laughs> Frank steps up to replace at the after- uh, once the party's over. Frank steps in. A peaceful transition of power. Yep. <laughs> then all of a sudden we're gonna go to the. Uh, the groomsmen, and we're gonna go with BM, Lehman, and Aaron. Very tight on the road. Mm-hmm. Share shows, share shows. Mm-hmm. And there's not, yeah, you know what? There's you're dressing up, you're dressing up uh, Waz in some sort of bear costume, and he's coming up, he's coming down <laughs> on all fours. We spent way too much time on that. That's gross. <laughs> My. So the best man to me is uh, I was going to pick Rick just because the bachelor party. Um, I'm doing that strictly for selfish, <laughs> strictly for selfish reasons. Mm. The groomsmen, um, I will take the three spots myself. <laughs> <laughs> I will dance with all the ladies. And for the <laughs> ring bearer, I'm picking my dog, Frank. Mm, I, like I just think you'd be an adorable dog. ring bearer. Sure. Could you imagine having him bop along with a little ring tied on his collar? It'd be adorable. Everybody love it. Hung out. Super excited. Mm-hmm. So exactly the same way Waz was going to do it. To pick <laughs> exactly, God. and then I'll get then I'll get Frank to pick marriage forever or divorce as part of the festivities. <laughs> Frank's, Frank's picks. Frank's. All right, Tyler. Who's your nation staff only wedding party? Who's uh, your best man? Jay, best man to bankroll the bachelor party. Like <laughs> here again, he said the other day on real life, he's like, I'm coming to your bachelor party. Cause it's an easy way for me to get a weekend golfing with no, without burning brownie <laughs> points. So I'll use him in this regard sure. too. And then I'll go with the four of you as groomsmen and the was idea as creepy as it might be is funny enough. All right, there you go. <laughs> there you go. If you tie it on securely, he even, he can't lose it. I would have not put it past him. Just have to make sure he's there that day. Mm-hmm. He's there. He's he's, you got to make a TikTok that. somewhere else. Yesterday, Waz came in at like three. Like, came in like rather late to the office. And I said, I was like, what are you doing here? He's like, I work here. I'm like, that's not what I was asking. I got here about 2.30 and he was here already. So was that's it, do you, you not yeah, remember Yeah, you guys me? were in the show still. When I walked in, he was out there. Most people come in at like 10. Like, between the 10 and 11. Pre-noon. Pre-noon. He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> I work here is a good answer, though. What are you doing here? Well, I work here, silly. Who are you? Wait a minute. Who are you? I think you should try that on some of your staff at the pint. Like when they just like show up, you're like, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, I work here. Of I'll course. Try that, tonight. that reminds me of the story of when I got my first ever job back in my Jersey City days. I interviewed at one location in the mall, but I was actually hired for the other. And I was a very nervous 16 year old. I walked into the location I was interviewed at. That's where I thought I'd been hired. And I was like, hello. And the person working was like, who are you? Can I help you? And I was like, I'm here for my shift. And she's like, well, I'm the manager and I've never seen you before. <laughs> and I was like, shit. Uh, uh, what? So this is a history now. Cause this is the, just reminds me. You went to the wrong MGM in, in Vegas. I did also do that once. And I went through the whole process, got on the elevator at one point, they checked me in on my phone and I got in the elevator and I'm like beeping it. It won't let me go to my floor. It took like an hour. And I eventually walked up back to the guy. I'm like, hey, man, you signed me in. I can't get up. And he looks, he's like, mm, you're staying Park MGM, not MGM Grand. So I had to get into another taxi and go. <laughs> so a little concerning that they were able to check you in as far as they Yeah. Were. So when- someone should really be focused in on, I know we gave away five spots for the wedding, but the sixth mm-hmm. one goes to making sure he gets to the right church at the right time. Yeah, yeah that too. Yep. Yes, that would be better. Chauffeur. Before we wrap up the podcast with Hot and Cold Performers, boys, I just a couple of, a couple of items I want to get to. Um... Mentioned Connor McDavid out versus the Coyotes. Fine. Troy Stetcher back in. <laughs> Hasn't played in a minute. Good job. Another thing that came out today, the Oilers and Vinny DeHarnay have paused their contract talks until after the postseason. Makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. No problem there. I just mm-hmm. like that they were engaged in talks. I know not that I thought he was going to go test free agency. I just, I like Vinny. I don't know. I am, I am you know? confident he'll sign. That's all I need to hear. That's all I need to hear. We're going to start off with our veggies, everybody. 
So plan your cold performers while I welcome to the podcast for the first time, Duregard Fence. If you're looking for a trusted professional fence company here in Alberta that can do it all, you can count on Duregard Fence Limited. For 37 years, they have been offering manufacturing, installing, and repair services, as well as a whole range of do-it-yourself solutions. The most highly trained and experienced fence installers operating the most modern fleet of Alberta here, or operating fleet of equipment here in Alberta, that is DuraGuard Fence, your one-stop shop for all your fencing needs over the last 37 years. Chain link, wood, vinyl, ornamental fencing, all very exciting. DuraGuard Fence Limited. I'm going to turn myself around here, get my buttons ready, and we are going to start down with Rick is on the right side of the screen. So we're coming to you for our, your DuraGuard Cold Performer of the Week. Well, I'm 90% sure this is who it was, but it's Rasmus Anderson for his dive in front of the net after it the slash him. room. Correct. It was him. And you know what? The NHL and Peros has to get a bit of this too because they don't have the balls to come out and suspend him or fine him or even mention it. That thi- that, how do you look at yourself in the mirror after that? How do you sit there and look and call yourself whatever your name is? You you let down your whole family doing that. <laughs> like his parents are embarrassed and they should be. Are you thrilled? I'm not. <laughs> I love my favorite part was that he grabbed the wrong leg. Every I, dude, he first like of all, it looked like he got shot in the shoulder. He looked like yeah. he shit himself for a second. <laughs> he jumped down and grabs the wrong leg. It's hilarious. Oh my god. He like back and couldn't. How do the officials the not go, okay, this guy's doing this shit? Like you literally can do that the Petrangelo twelve to six uh, axe job on him. They're like, nah, that's on you. I just bro. that that's like if you want p- a reviewable play, let, let me review that one. Oh, well, it's or even me. just have the media afterwards be able to be like, what did you think on this play? And ask him what, them ask them what time he's going to play soccer next because that was ridiculous. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Tyler, your check. <laughs> Uh, I had it written, limited. Yeah, I had it written down earlier. Um, it's Ipe Muzuhara, Tro- Shohei Otani's <laughs> translator. I mean, just uh, listen, we'll get out of all the ethical stole money from a friend, illegal gambling, all that. Push all that aside. Dude, you're a you're a cold sports better. You're my cold performer because you might be the worst sports better on the planet. <laughs> we have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. An average of 25 bets a day. So what was, what was the number of bets? What was the number of bets? 25 bets per day? Yeah. yeah. What was the number of bets? Field. Like 19,000? 19,000. Can someone please do the math and go find out how many he won and how many he lost? That would be great. But ranging from like, I think the highest one was like 160 grand to 10 to $10 was the lowest one. (laughs) What did he see? Like as he's going through like, Hey, I want 30 grand on this 50 grand on this. Okay. 10 grand or $10. $10. I don't feel good about that. that. You know, damn well, he lost 160 grand one, but he won that $10 bet. Oh, those ones hurt too. Or he had a day (laughs) after he lost like 200 grand and was like, just give me like a 14 leg parlay. All <laughs> underdogs, 10 bucks. He took the entire, he took the entire schedule for the angels one year, all 162 games and put 10 bucks on Maybe it. Maybe he was trying to do a rollover thing. <laughs> exactly. I would imagine that he also was paid reasonably well. He Very made, well. I think his starting wage the first year with the angels was like 80 to hundred. And by the end of it, he was making like 200. Yeah. I saw somewhere he was making like 400. So I don't know if that with was the like, Dod- his new deal with the Dodgers. I think that what it is. Yeah. 400 grand. Yeah. You moron. I'm just upset. Mm. Wasted opportunity. It's funny how the whole world's more upset at this guy than Shohei is, though. That says something to me. Well, it's because he's a he's a good man, that Shohei. Cold performer of the week. Yeah, for our friends at Duraguard fans, please, Lehman. Cold performer of the week. I haven't really put much thought into this one, funnily enough. Here comes a five minute rant on it. I'll I'll just say um, just Mark Stone. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> okay. Thank you for taking Nish that Dan. off the board for me. <laughs> Nish Dan, you're up next. Your Duraguard Fence Limited Cold Performer of the Week. Well, I was on the fence between two, so thank you, Liam. And I will okay. take the other one. It's going to go to the Arizona Coyotes. This absolute shenanigan uh, parade that they've taken us on for the last 15 years, uh, wrapping up now in probably the most fitting way possible by just taking the team out from underneath them, uh, even before they can have the final auction hammer bang uh arizona coyotes you get my cold performer of all time oh that's cold oh, that's a lot for a dear guard fence um i would be remiss if i didn't mention this as my cold performer over the last handful of weeks leading up to our event last weekend at greta we were talking about a potential head-to-head between liam and Waz on the football game unfortunately Lehman couldn't be there had some prior engagements that he had to tend to but 
That didn't stop me from filming Waz having an attempt on the football game. And quite arguably, that was the worst attempt I've ever seen. I think I scored more points in that video that he posted of me. I, before the game even started, I wanted to go play just because I think it was fun. I put up a score of 250 and I walked up to Tyler and I went, I just had a shit score because the high score was like 360 or something like that. Set by Tyler, probably. Could I had the night off at an arm thing. <laughs> Waz hit 30. And all 30 of those points came from draining it in the middle hole. He didn't hit a single receiver. Didn't try though. But he had a little bop going in his step. Yeah, I don't know what was going on there. Well, he was trying to get in the mood. I say in the summertime, we give them a chance to redeem themselves. Outside, real football, we can be the targets or hold up through the hoops or something like that. I'd love to. Yeah. Okay, we do that. We'll I have a, a kicking thing too. I have a really good arm. I, I also have I a bet good I arm. could throw it 40 yards. No. A real yards sized ball. football? 40, 40 yards is a long a distance. Canadian ball, a, an American ball. What what was long the, distance, is, 40 yards is a long ways. What is. was the old competition? Yeah, maybe like 35. Pass, punt, kick. Yes. Yes. Nation Network, Bring pass, punt, Let's do it. pass, punt, I'm kick. In. All right, I'm in. Uh, by the way, Waz is for you. What the hell is going on? That's how I felt watching him try to throw a football. Andy Reid did that thing and he was like towering this every other he kid. He's like there. 11 and he was like already 6'1". <laughs> Speaking of which, like we're going to get to hot performers here, but are you in this this summer? I say that at the Riverhawks games this summer, we we attempt the nine 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 challenge. Oh yeah, hundred percent. What's nine nine nine? Nine nine dogs, nine beers, nine innings. Right. Forgot about the innings. To me, I think that the hot dogs are the hang up. But that's also a lot of beers to drink in two and a half hours. I if think normal cans of like Bud Light. Yeah, dialogue. yeah. Does it have to be dialogue. a beer all the time? Can you throw in a? Uh, can you throw in like a uh, salty? No, no, same beers, no, beers. same be. hot dogs yeah. for every competitor. You got to give nine hot dogs and nine beers right at the start of the game. Yeah. No, I don't want nine hot dogs right away because yes. I, that ninth hot dog is going to be chilly. Yep. That's the I want that it. thing that's to be warm. Challenge, Rick. No, there's no way. You can go you get warm deliver dogs. And, oh, and the beers have got to be warm too then. Bring your microwave. Well, at least in the dogs. nation box, we will have the fridge. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can microwave your beer So too. anyway, I think that I don't know that I could get past the hot dogs. I will drink those beers. Easy to do. It's four bats. I got the hot dogs down. It's four bats. No, no, you just, the key is you dip the hot dog thing. into the beer. If you have to. And then yeah. the bread is, the bread is eliminated yeah. and it's a wet rag. A wet glizzy <laughs> down the, the old hatch. <laughs> wet bread is one of the grossest just things Just ask Chestnut world. about it. Awful. Joey. Yeah. And like anytime he does that, I'm just revolted by Joey Chestnut. I get it, but I don't like it. All right. We're reversing the order. Let's wrap up the podcast. Durgard Fence Limited, your hot performer of the week. Nation Dan. Uh, I'm just going to give it to Sharks goalie Devin Cooley for one of the better quotes I think that hockey has and goalies are good for this kind of stuff all the time. Uh, won the game last night, 40 shots. Uh, I don't know if it was a shutout. Was it a shutout or one goal? You know, can't remember. Anyways, this is the line afterwards. Look up. I'm like, wow, a goal on 40 shots or whatever. I'm like, I feel good. It's just like, nobody cares. You know, nothing's really going to matter. We're all going to die. Is that what he said? That was yes. the end of the quote. <laughs> and that was the end of it. He got, he had like Nothing's a little bit really of a Bruce Gallo smirk gonna on die. his face. But uh, yeah, Devin Cooley, you get my hot performer of the week. He's a hot guy. Hmm. Like That's like a less. nihilist Arby's tweet is what that is. <laughs> somebody said afterwards is like, it's, it's really tough for us to do this to goalies where all their friends get to go out and play for 60 minutes on the ice and they have to stand there and just think about life. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Harbin, you're up next. Your Durgard fence hop form of the week. Probably. Um, you, we, you know, we do this segment every week. <laughs> Just I know snuck I just, up on him. I don't think about it as much until I'm in the moment. I'm gonna say Chalmers' performance yesterday on real life was amazing. There was some stuff you people will never hear on that show <laughs> that I will remember for the rest of my life. So Christopher Chalmers and his imaginary friend. Pour it on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> One day we'll have uh some excerpts from that podcast and you'll laugh. We'll all be canceled, but you'll laugh. <laughs> Tyler, you're up next. Derek Ard, Fence Limited, hot form of the week. This weekend, Masters weekend, absolutely electric. Best sports weekend of the year. One of the best sports weekends of the year. Yeah. And it's golfing season in Edmonton. I got my first tee time tomorrow. So golfing season in the Masters. They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time it works every time. That doesn't make sense. I feel like you just made a contradiction. Why? If the Masters is so good, why don't you want to watch it? I do. But you're not, you're, you're choosing not to watch the Masters on Saturday. You're going to go play golf instead. Are you aware of how the Masters app works? It's better than watching it on TV. No, it's you just, not. Oh, 1 million percent, Rick. 
Why? Because you just go, <laughs> look, so all the guys I bet on, I star them up at the top. Mm-hmm. And then I go watch live and I hit my group and it shows me every shot from only the players I bet on and nothing else. See, I and I just have everything. an endless loop of just the guys I bet on. It's very convenient. Don't get me wrong, but I'd rather watch everything. You mm. bet on 71 people? I won't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they call me Ipe. <laughs> Oh, my golf season will start range of units post is from tournament. ten to ten thousand. <laughs> my golf season will start post tournament. I want to watch it all. You pay already. Uh, who was I on? Oh, it's my Rick, turn. you're up next. Your guard fence limited hot form of the week. Well, I think it's fairly obvious. It's the company that made the chair that Morgan Wallen threw. That thing came. That thing went what four or five stories. Not a dent on it. Hell yeah, oh, that should fun. be a commercial right now. People mm-hmm. not want to see that chair. I would sit in it. They, I hear that we're going to put it in the Hall of Fame. Should. My next to is jail cell. <laughs> Woo! Friday, baby. Yeah, let's celebrate Friday. Woo! Uh, uh, just real quick, I didn't really put any thought into this either. Dan, for, for Duragard Fence Limited, my hot performer of the week is Oscar Clefbaum because he popped up in the Oilers Nation mentions on Instagram. And it's always fun to see players current or former popping up in our notifications. So shout out to Oscar Clefbaum. I'd like to see those abs, sir. I'd like to know that they're still intact. Put some respect on my name. You could, did you reply to his comment? I'm uh, currently on a list of people not allowed to talk to him. When I, when I put out the Arizona Coyotes (laughs) image of the moving uh, image that somebody had made on Reddit, uh, Mike Commodore responded and confirmed that his sources also heard the Coyotes are going to be moving out. Did he tweet Arizona Coyotes pack your shit? He didn't. It's coming. It's coming. (laughs) A bunch of people did respond with that undefeated. All right, gentlemen, only one piece of business left to do. I guess two, because there's back to back games. Let's get a score prediction tonight against the Utah Coyotes of Arizona. Nation Dan, you're up. 2-1 Edmonton Oilers win. It's fine. Liam. 5-1. That works. 6-2 Oilers win. I like that one. Rick? I'm sticking with 5-1 myself. I got a 4-2 win coming at you. That I got works. a 4-2 win coming works. against the Canucks tomorrow. Rick, Canucks, score prediction. 5-2. 3-2. 4-3 time. Dan, wrap four, it up. 4-3 overtime loss. Oh, how dare you? Boo. If he's the reason our leg ends at five, Sorry, boys. Mm. more of the money line. Yep. You didn't include more me. Money line. I would have picked there. the win if you'd included me. <laughs> yep. I would have loved to have included. Have a great weekend, everybody.